ABC Thursdays. Welcome back. Grey's Anatomy is all new. Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? The drama going down. Bungee jumping from the bridge is cord snap. We need all hands on deck. Is unbelievable. You think you're God's gift to this hospital? You're just another doctor. My relationship with Catherine is complicated. I'm gonna sue you. Your lawyers know where to find me. You're unbelievable. Grey's Anatomy. All new Thursdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. Before we jump into the show, we're very excited to share with you we're currently part of Spotlight. Spotlight is a project from Apple Podcasts which highlights a creator or creative team every few months and they've chosen us for this autumn. We cannot believe our little luck. Can we? Thank you so much to Apple Podcasts. We really hope that you enjoy Self Care Club. Please follow and subscribe if you don't already. If you're brand new to us, it makes a huge difference to us and to the algorithm and to all sorts of techie things that we don't really understand. But we really want you to follow and subscribe this show and 40ish. And don't forget that you can listen ad free to Self Care Club and 40ish when you subscribe to our channel for less than the price of one cup of coffee. One, I'm Nicole Goodman. And I'm Lauren Mishcon. And welcome to your weekly wellness roundup, where we bring all the feedback from you guys, the self care club community, the happenings in the world of self care, and TikTok trends and gossip and everything else. Well, it's been a bit different the last few weeks, hasn't it? Because we've been doing a lot more feedback. We have been doing feedback. I like it. We're doing it again this week. Yeah, it's good. But first... Well, we've got to open with something what, we promised what? at the end of Monday's show. What did we promise? We promised that we would tell the story of what happened when you basically stood me up on our breakfast date. Oh, I thought we were going to tell it when we record that show. What show? The show on menopause that we're doing no, next we month. Said, no, we said we'd record it. We'd tell them on Friday. Okay, so... Because we're still in the friendship... Trilogy. On Saturday morning, Nicole and I had to go to a clinic as part of to do some to get some results of some tests that we're doing for a series of shows in October. And Nicole's appointment was at nine, and my appointment was at nine forty-five. And we agreed because it was in a really nice place in town that after my appointment, we would meet and have some breakfast together. So we were in Bond Street. The sun was shining, and I said, "I'll hang around and I'll wait for you, and then we'll have breakfast." And she was like, okay, fine. And I said where well, we were going to have breakfast, didn't I? Yeah. And I walked up there. It was about a 15 minute walk, mm-hmm. which was fine. They didn't have a table. So then I walked all the way back and then I found this really cool little place. It was right by Selfridges called uh, Sundays in Brooklyn. And it mm. is exactly how it sounded. That sounds amazing. And it was full of women brunching. And yeah. they were getting their like cocktails and they were having... What's the champagne cocktail? Oh, mimosa. They were having mimosas and they were all just having a really, really lovely time. Mm. And I was sat there with a menu waiting for you. Billy fucking no mates. (laughs) And you just, you just didn't turn up. When I say she literally stood me up, I felt like I was stood up on a date, which I was. You were. She didn't answer her messages. She didn't no, call. No, she didn't text. No, because I'm in an appointment with the doctor. So my phone is obviously on silent and I'm not looking at it. And it was supposed to be a 45 minute appointment and it turned out to be an hour and a half appointment. And I then glanced at my phone at one point and realised my husband had sent me a message about picking our son up from the rugby match. And I had missed the pickup time. It had been so long. And then there was all these messages from you like, are you okay? And then I started to get I started to get really, really worried because I thought, well, she's in with the doctor. She's been ages. She is the most reliable person I know. There's no way you wouldn't have called me to yeah. say I'm running late. Yeah, yeah. It's just not like you yeah. at all. You just went silent. So then I started thinking, oh my gosh, she's been given really bad news. Yeah. I am so worried now. Yeah. yeah and was... then I was like, are you okay? I'm really worried. I'm gonna and wait. then I still didn't reply. I'm going to wait five more minutes and then I'm going to go. Yeah. Nothing. Wait no. five more minutes. And then I just got on the train. Yeah. And left. Yeah. And then I had to say to them, I'm really sorry. My friend's gone AWOL. I don't know. Yeah. So you were starving. I, I was, was starving. I was like hysterical because I had this child stranded on a rugby pitch and I'd stood you up and I had no idea how much time had passed in that room. 
And it was just all really stressful. And FYI, everything was fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I was not in the least bit So Ill. I get this message when I came out of the train station and you're like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with my yeah. health. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I am fine. It was just... So yeah, you totally stood me up. I'm sorry. Right. I so totally forgive you. Totally unintentional. And it was... I know it was. Because again, this is back to assuming good intent from your friend, right? Yeah. Because I know... I, I would never stand I, you up. You would never stand never. me up. Never. That's why it was so shocking, and it yeah. was such a worry. It was it was a bit of a stressful morning in yeah. the end. <laughs> yeah, we were going to have a, a spot of brunch. We were going to do a bit of shopping, weren't we? We were really looking forward and they to were it. Just trashed. I had to yeah. rush back anyway. Anyway, doesn't matter. I want to talk about oh the TV show that everyone's watching. Come on, and it's the perfect couple on Netflix. It's all about Nicole Kidman and her terrible wigs, and it is just the campest. They're not wigs. That wigs. They're all wigs. They're not wigs. Yes, they are. It's like one of the most famous things about that show is the wigs. They're all wigs. But it is not her What do you mean they're all wigs? They're that all she's different. Wearing. That she's wearing, yeah. She's wearing all different wigs in that show. It's not her hair. Which is weird because her hair's really nice, but that is none of those hairstyles are her hair. How do you know? Because it's been absolutely everywhere. Hasn't it? Has you always say that, and then I think well, it's well, not I your seen it. not on your algorithm, but it's on. Well, mine. I've watched it. I mean, and I've even been listening to podcasts, other podcasts, where they're all obsessed with her wigs. She's got this thing that in loads of the stuff she does, actually ninety percent of it, she always wears a wig instead of. Well, her maybe own hair. she wants to protect her own hair because the, those wigs, there's a lot of. Uh, it's very set. Very set. So yeah. probably a lot of heat to get that style. She probably doesn't want to ruin her hair. And have you finished Perfect Couple Yes, yet? I have. Okay. Let's not spoil it for the listeners. Did you guess? Did you finish it? Yes. Did you guess? No. I no. didn't. I guessed the right person by episode five, but the wrong motive. So it's a kind of murder mystery set in Nantucket. It is, it is so camp and it's all about ridiculous cashmere. And I'm just loving it. That merits dress. Merit's dress. Oh, that dress on the beach. Oh, oh I like literally can't cope with that dress. How beautiful does she look in that? Fabulous. And also, the clothes are great. It is styled so beautifully. Um, and I loved, I just loved the setting and the location. And yeah. it was just, it was the easiest watch. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Everyone's beautiful. Yeah. It was great. Um, I mean, it's, it's great. Trash to, to a point. It's great trash. Yeah. It's great trash. It's the perfect kind of don't really have to think about it viewing. The setting's fabulous. The house is setting. Love Nantucket. Love the cast. It just silly. She didn't look so brilliant in it, Nicole Kidman. But I did like the husband. We both quite liked the husband. I did like the husband, but he looked like he smelt of fags. That's all right. No. In a certain No, I light. cannot stand the smell of fags. I know you've got a real thing about it. I mean, I don't love it, but I would have overlooked it he just smelled musty you could see i mean hot as hell yeah hello yeah <laughs> but you've got to ditch the fags <laughs> hello um it was great i really enjoyed it me too okay i want to tell you about a trend and i want to know if you ever would have done this in your dating days people this is not a joke people are using pineapples to find love instead of dating apps have you heard about this no. Okay. Um, <laughs> pineapple is helping people overseas find companionship and changing the dating game in Spain. The fruit. The fruit, yes. Between 7 and 8 p.m. at Mercadona. Mercadona is a Spanish supermarket chain. Yeah. Single people put their pineapples upside down in their trolley if they're looking for love. Then you head for the wine aisle and if... You see someone that you're interested in and their pineapple is also upside down. You bump carts. You bump trolleys. Uh, is it only <laughs> from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m.? Yes. So it's like a dating open house. Yeah, you, you bump trolleys with them. It's like ding. like That's like swiping left or right. I don't know which way you swipe when you like I someone. I actually think this is great. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Go, it goes further. If you're not looking for love... Um, if you're just looking for a one night stand, you pick up lettuce. You know why? Because lettuce goes off quicker. <laughs> so it's like... It's got a shorter shelf life. Precisely. And if you are looking for marriage, Ooh, right. you put lentils in your trolley. Okay. Long shelf life. Yeah. So hold on. What if you're not looking for a one night stand and you're not looking for marriage? 
What if then, you're, then there's you're a big... Laugh. Then you're looking for the, then you're the pineapple person. You're dating. Okay. What if you just want to have a bit of fun, but you don't want a one night stand? Maybe Bananas? A, maybe a nectarine? <laughs> <laughs> an aubergine? An aubergine's definitely like the lettuce. I reckon an aubergine or a banana. I think the pineapple is like general the general dating fruit. I mean, I'm, I have to say, I really like this idea. And is it only in Spain? It's only in Spain currently. But the, it's been all over social media, but all the Americans are killing themselves because in America, if you put an upside down pineapple in your trolley, it means you're looking for swingers. I thought so. Yeah. I knew something sounded yeah. familiar. Yes. So it depends on your country. So be very careful. Jesus Christ. Now you have to be really intentional about how you shop. And, and how you put your fruit in your trolley. So I was in Waitrose on Sunday morning. Right. Did you I, buy a pineapple? I bought lettuce. Uh-oh. <laughs> I did. I bought lettuce. Wow. I mean, imagine if you... I mean, I got out of there alive. So imagine it was so... Imagine if you were like going to the yogurt aisle with your lettuce and you accidentally crashed into some man. Yeah. yeah. And he also had lettuce and he'd be like, hello. Yeah. What would have happened then? I don't know. You would have got yourself in some trouble. Hmm. Good to know. Okay. Good to know, clubbers. It is good to know. Yeah. Thank God we are all now aware <laughs> of what these things mean. Thank you, Lauren. You, you it's are like a so, national service. You are so mm. welcome. Mm. Love it. So this week, our show was all about the five steps to successful friendship. It was like the five most common things that people say or do or think or don't do that prevents them from connecting to others. And we gave you fixes around how to rethink these things and forge stronger friendships. And we asked you guys to tell us what you think on this subject. And you replied. Are you reading out? Am I reading out today? You are like in charge today. Oh, wow. I feel like I could have stayed home. You are doing I such a... I don't like to be in charge all the time. I like to be the sub, not the dom. <laughs> what do you mean all the time? I don't like to be in charge. You're not in charge all the time. Okay, good. Uh, are you in charge all the time? Never. No. I'm that... never in charge. You are joking. I'm not. You feel like you're never in charge. So you think I'm always in charge? Yeah. It's a worry because I always think you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have our very specific roles of what we're in charge of. Yeah, that is true. Should we, we do. should we tell them what you did this week? Oh, so I, I did am, something really special. I am basically in charge of anything technical. Yes. And when you are in a podcasting space, it turns out that 89% of the stuff we do is tech based. It has a tech element. Yes. Yes. So I have a lot of stuff to do. You do. And then Lauren, what she does, and she's very cute, is she always tries to help me with my load. But it doesn't help. But she fucks it up <laughs> every <laughs> every single time. Without fail. Without mm. fail. You are so consistent I'm with reliable. it. I'm reliable. It's really reliable. That If I'm touching it, I'm fucking it up. Yeah. Yeah. And I never, ever want to, like, you know, tell you not to or make you feel bad. But you should. Or, no, I don't want to because I think it's very sweet because I know why you're doing it. But also <laughs> you're doing it to lessen my workload, but yeah. you always create more because <laughs> yeah. I always have to go and fix it. This week I did a, an extra special thing. Didn't yeah. I? yeah. 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 So she went in to put some show notes on our new show, 40-ish. Yeah. That's my job. That's my normal job. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really happy you do it. Anything to do with copy is, mm. is Lauren's domain. Mm. Mm. I don't touch copy. Mm. I don't know why I'm mm. now scared to. Mm. Even when I pop an Instagram post, I'm scared to. Because <laughs> she'll always reply five minutes later, who put up that post? There's a spelling because mistake. Because I am the punctuation and spelling police. That's yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the visual police. Like yes. She wouldn't notice. Yeah. It's weird that you know. Anyway. Anyway. So she went to change some copy on some of our show notes on the new show 40-ish. And what she ended up doing was changing the title. The actual of, title of the show. The actual title of the show. So the show is called 40-ish. And then it was on Apple Podcasts as trailer <laughs> dash welcome to 40-ish. That was the name of our catchy, catchy show. <laughs> trailer welcome to 40-ish. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicole Goodman and welcome to trailer welcome to 40-ish. <laughs> and I sort of knew... I'd done something wrong, but I didn't know what I'd done wrong or or how I'd done it. And so because of that, there was no way that I could go back and fix it. And then you were like, you've just changed the title of the show. And I was like, mm, I, I thought I'd done something. 
but I don't know how I did it. So then I had to go into Apple Podcast Connect. I yeah. had to go into Chartable. I had to go into all of our like landing pages. I had to find the passwords. I had to go, you know, go to the hub of the fucking problem. And then I had to request updates. I had to go on megaphone. Like it was a whole thing. It basically caused you a whole load of extra work. And it took 48 hours. I'm really sorry. For the show to now not be called trailer <laughs> dash welcome to 40 <laughs> You know what? If you think that's catchy, then <laughs> we could use it for another show. Oh, I've discovered this brand new show. It's brilliant. It's called Trailer Dash Welcome to 40 ish. <laughs> it's a hit. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. <laughs> it's a weird title, but just go with it. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, it's now officially gone back to 40 It's okay. So I'm sorry if you saw the glitch. That was me. <laughs> I'm being technically backward. Basically, if there is ever a glitch, oh, just it's my know. fault. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, it's very dear. funny. Very funny. Oh. Well, it wasn't funny. On Saturday night, I was not fucked off, but I was just like, fuck's sake. Just... <laughs> so then Alton's like, why is it Why is it, Why is is it? it called that? I'm like, because Lauren's... <laughs> I hadn't even spoken to you. And I'm like, Lauren's obviously touched something and fucked it up. I stood you up for breakfast and then I fucked yeah. up the show. Yeah. And we oh. were on our way out. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Dear, dear, it wasn't dear. good, was it? No. And then we were climbing up in the bloody charts. We're now at number five in the charts of 40 ish, but it was called Trailer. <laughs> Dash, welcome to 40 I'm like, oh my God, we're at number five. I need to snapshot this so we can put it on our show. I'm like, really but I can't proud of it. snapshot it can't with this, this yeah. title. Can't snapshot Brilliant. that. Seriously, Diane, was Colgate your secret to winning Best Smile back in high school? Yep, and it still is. I even work overnight. Huh? Colgate's Optic White Overnight Whitening Pen works overnight. So after one week, I can show up confident and reunion ready. And here I was bragging about my kids. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. <laughs> this is what you guys said about this subject. Um, we're doing it all anonymously because I think it makes everyone more comfortable about sharing. I really resonated with what you said about the liking gap. I always assume, and I think this has been the case since I was a teenager, that people won't like me or find me annoying or boring. Oh, I bet they don't. When I get home after meeting new people, I often go over things that I've said and I kick myself or I feel embarrassed. I know this is mostly in my head as I do have friends who seem to like me a lot. So it's something that I need to work on getting over. It's an anxiety. Yeah. That is classic anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I do get this. When I get anxious, and that's normally hormone-based of mine, so I know that I can sort of get it balanced and get it fixed. But I did have a spate of a few months where I was so, so chronically anxious. And I had these thoughts all the time. And it is absolutely exhausting. Mm. Mm. Really exhausting. Yeah. So I really do resonate with that. I moved to cities recently and I've been forced to make new friends. It really is an effort. I can't lie, but it is worth it because I now have a couple of new people I enjoy spending time with and it isn't fun being lonely. I do wonder, like, if I moved yeah. cities or I moved countries, how quickly would I make friends? Well, when my friend Steph did it, she definitely had a year where she said, or six, six, no, six months-ish was really, really hard. She had a husband and three kids, but she did not know a soul. Yeah. But now she has lots of friends and really good friends. I mean, she's been there 10 years. It's a long time. But I know in the beginning it was tough. And she's pretty sociable, but she did have to make a real effort. Hard. So I had to, I moved gyms. I know it sounds very silly mm. and very minor, but I had all of my had gym friends. I had my community, yeah. which I loved. Yeah. And so when I moved gyms, I had to move gyms just due to an injury and whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I, I walked into the gym, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And nobody knew me and nobody knows like... Actually, you know, I'm actually really a really nice gym friend. Yeah. But I had to make new gym friends. Have and you? I've I've Have made you? I've made them now. But they're only because I go at the same time every day. Mm. So when last week I went at nine o'clock every day. One of your new friends is Lewis Capaldi, shall he's, we just say. He's actually not my new friend yet. He is gonna be your new friend. He no, he's going to be my new best friend. Okay, great. He doesn't know. He doesn't know it yet. But as we said, he is in a place where he doesn't know that his new best friend is just in his gym. He just hasn't met her yet. That's you. Yep. I have you eyed him up a couple Lewis. of times, not in that way, but mm. just to set, just be like, oh my God, that is Lewis Capaldi. How's his I, form? 
I mean, lifting. Like, how is he lifting well? <laughs> to do it correctly? I, I'm not staring at him. Oh, okay. That's not cool. Okay. I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> you don't know. What you gym don't do that in a gym, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you do in a gym. Staring at someone in the gym would could come across as really creepy, especially if they're really famous. <laughs> especially, if, especially if you've got a pineapple in your left hand <laughs> like and a lettuce the... in your right. <laughs> I'll go with a pineapple. Maybe don't. Anyway, the point is, yeah. bar Lewis Capaldi, who next week I will report back on and whether yeah, we're friends please. or not. And Laura's yeah. like, get him on the show. Get him on the show. I'm like, I haven't spoken to him yet. He'd love this show. How do you know? He just would. He's got a great sense of humour. Has he? Yeah. Yeah. He's also got a fabulous voice. Yeah. He could just come and sing if he likes. I'm sure he wouldn't want to do that. You I'm don't sure know because you haven't asked him. Don't assume the liking gap. He might like you a lot. He will. I don't. I always assume he will like me a lot. We've discovered this, right? And everyone needs gym friends. Everybody, whether you're Lewis Capaldi or whether you're little old me, everyone needs and wants gym friends. Okay. Thanks Kay. for that. I mean, you don't want gym friends. I don't. I reckon Lewis Capaldi does. I don't want a gym or a gym friend. I have never said the words Lewis Capaldi more than I have in the last week. <laughs> Poor Lewis. He doesn't know. Not yet. Anyway. Oh my God, one listener said, when you said that piece on the show about immediately assuming people are upset with you when they don't reply to you, I felt like you had reached into my head. This is me. Well, it's you and a lot of people, yep. listener. Yeah, it really is. Someone else said, I wanted to share that I'm someone who always feels like I can't be bothered to go out. And once I'm there, I actually enjoy myself. So please tell the listeners to make the effort. That sounds like it's you. It does sound like it's me. Did you write that? No, I didn't write it, but it is very much me. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else said, I have found that since COVID, when I cut out a large amount of friends, I'm actually happier. Oh, okay. But I found, I found the same in okay. COVID. I really did. Because it also allowed me the time to focus on the people I want to focus on. It sorted the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. The yeah. curds from the whey. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's all I've got for you. <laughs> it was a great leveller. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. For all its negatives. There were a couple of positives. That was one of them. Well, the other positive was that we started self-care club in COVID. Yeah, that was handy, wasn't it? Well, it gave us something to bloody do. It did, for sure. Okay, anything else you want to share this week? What's the podcast? You mentioned on the main show you were listening to a great podcast when you walked alone. What was it? Do you know what? It's really old and it's true crime. Never mind. Still share. It's still available. I will say yeah. it's a little bit long-winded. Okay, but the story is just so fascinating. It's called The Teacher's Pet. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay. And it's about this Australian woman who yep. went missing. I remember. And basically her husband was obviously so clearly a suspect in her murder, but she was always treated as a missing person. And it's just the investigation as to what happened. And I still don't know what happened. Um, it's being investigated as the podcast is going along. That's one of the first podcasts I ever listened to. Oh, so you've heard it? Yeah. Yeah. My mum said last week she's going on holiday. She's very much enjoying, she very much enjoyed the first episode of 40-ish, but she's going on holiday, so she wasn't going to be able to listen to the second one. I said, well, no, you will. You could just, <laughs> just listen on your phone. Or listen on your phone, mum. I mean, it's literally like where you get it from. I know. And she was like, well, no, the problem is the Wi-Fi isn't very good where we are. I said, oh, okay, I understand. She said, but... But how long will it be available for? I She's said, asked you this before. I said, Mum, it's going to be available forever. It's a podcast. Once you put it out there, it's there. I like how you're taking the mick out of your mum, but to be fair. Although whilst I was saying that, I was just thinking it's available forever, but it's also likely that I could just go in and delete all of our podcasts and not even <laughs> know I'd done it. That's also possible. So I better tell her to listen while she can. Just stay out of megaphone, okay? <laughs> Just stay the fuck away from megaphone. <gasps> I've also got something to tell you. What? You're not going to be happy. Oh, no. My dad what? told me this morning. Your dad's listened to 40 He's like, I listened to the first episode. Oh, no. He said, I know you told me not to because it's a little bit risque, but, but I did. And what's he got to say about seeing the class reps minge? He, he, he didn't say about that. Good. He just said, who was it? Who You know, the, the, the class WhatsApp thing. Mm. I said, what happened? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you it was. No. Le nearly just said it. Yeah. Um, and I, I've had quite a lot of people talk to me about the window cleaner. 
Yes. Because a lot of people have the same window cleaner as me. Turns out. He is married. Turns out. With turn, children. Turns out. Mm. It's a very big business around North London. So now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now. Yeah. I feel very exposed. And next time he's coming, I'm basically going to make sure I'm at your house. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good plan. Because my dad was plan. like, so you fancy the window cleaner? I'm like, dad, I don't fancy him. I just. He's like, but you said you fancied him. I said, Lauren makes fun of me fancying him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get you in any more trouble than you're... You've dug your own hole and I'm not helping you with the space. What am I going to do when he turns up to the house? You're going... And then someone will have told him because someone in my street... You're going to be... ...sent me a text who I'm not very friendly with <laughs> and just said, ah! the window cleaner with a laughing emoji. Oh, dear. Right? Yeah. And I said to her, do you think anyone's going to tell him? Hmm. And she was like, no. But they she probably will tell him. But they might. They might, yeah. Have you listened to Nicole's podcast? It's about you. Oh my god. Someone just, told me I they just... had my window cleaner. They were like, Oh, Fabio. <laughs> oh, he's such a nice guy. I was like, Do you have Fabio? They said, Yeah. I said, Yeah, he is Listen, such a nice people guy. People really have a lot of thoughts and feelings about their window cleaners. They really as I have do. found out. They really someone do. else came up to me in the gym. Yeah. And she said. I have Anthony. She doesn't live anywhere near me. This is when I realised he had a bigger business Anthony's than I realised. He he has got reach, Lauren. And she said, I also kind of fancy him, but I'm not sure why. I'm telling you, it's the window cleaner thing. It's our generation. It's sort of that subconscious thing of 70s carry on films where there's a little bit of innuendo and you think window cleaner and then you think sex and you can't help it. It's just joined up. It just is. It just is. It just is. We've got to stop talking about the window cleaner okay, now let's because stop. I can't ever look at him in the eye again. I'm actually going to have to get a new window cleaner. Well, then you're going to be in the same predicament as poor old Emma who wrote into 40ish with her window cleaner predicament. Anyway, if you don't know what we're talking about, go and listen to 40ish. Because, it's the first episode. Yeah, you'll you'll enjoy it. Uh, we will be back next week on Monday. Yes. We're talking about change. We are talking about change. Not the change, just change. <laughs> Uh, they don't call it the change anymore. I know, I know. Like they don't call it the curse anymore either. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, lucky, isn't it? That is lucky. Yeah. Okay. They don't call it any of those things. They just call it periods and menopause. Well, we're doing a whole mini series in October about that, aren't yeah, we? But next Another week, trilogy. But next week we are talking about change. We will be back next week, clubbers. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye-bye.